How's it going? Hey, man. How are you? Good. Thanks. Thanks for being all open to do this. Um, it's <laughs> certainly getting colder in Chicago, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I have a few days left here before I go to to Miami and then Spain. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you're from Spain. Which part again? Which, uh, which city? It's Salamanca. It's uh, on the west side between Madrid and Portugal. It's mm-hmm. two hours. Uh, yeah. Madrid, yeah. Yeah, I know. I've known you for about a year, maybe over about a year and a half, two years. And uh, you know, you DJ. You you are. Yeah. Comp- is it engineering or is it software development? I don't. I never software, understand yeah, the software difference. Software. <laughs> software. <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. No matter where you go, like it depends on the on the company. You get a different uh, title. Software engineer. It's what I am. Yeah, and uh, you love golf. Uh, you're yeah. a man. You're a man of many pursuits. <laughs> I keep myself right? busy. Yeah. 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 I, I like to work on my different various uh you know things. I like basketball and I like volleyball and I like reading and yeah. culture and psychology. I, I just love to learn new things. But um yeah, it's a it's a podcast about motivation and development okay. and uh things that make you tick, right? So people mm-hmm. like you I, I find fascinating and I I like to create a, a, a platform for people like you to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, what keeps you moving to the next thing? You know, what, what makes you excited to get up in the morning, not to be too cheesy, but, um, yeah, if we can get into that, that'd be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So from Salamanca to the United, to the United States, was that yeah. always something that you wanted to do to come to the U S or, uh, tell me more about that story. Yeah, not at all. It wasn't a goal, but, uh, so yeah, uh-huh. I went to college, uh, in Madrid um, uh, my major was in telecommunications engineering, which in the US, uh, I, I don't think it, it exists like that. It's a combination of software engineering, uh, uh, electrical engineering, and uh, well, the major I actually graded on was uh, uh, tele- telecommunications itself. But the first three years, you share software and electrical um, courses. So anyway, yeah, I was in, in Madrid, uh, and one of the things we have in Europe uh, is that you can study a, a year abroad. Uh, it's called this pro- this program is called Erasmus. Maybe you heard of it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then there was this other program to study in the U.S. So I said, oh, l- let's make it big instead of just study in somewhere else in Europe. Let's let's check what cities they have they offer in in, in the U.S. I saw Chicago. I don't know. I liked it. Uh, why not? I, not that I knew anything about the city other yet than just seeing Chicago in TV shows when I that I watched as a kid or movies or whatever. Uh-huh. But yeah, I said, why not? And yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah, I, I spent six months in, in Madrid and mm-hmm. I lived I lived near the, um, the Estación de Atocha, the train station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, every day I took the yellow line to mm-hmm. like Ar- Arguelles, Moncloa, that area. Oh, nice. And then nice. Ciudad Universitaria. And I went to Complutense for, for about five yeah. months there. And yeah. it was an amazing city, amazing experience. I still miss the tapas, the croquetas. <laughs> <laughs> Reason <laughs> every day. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the food was, uh, you know, the Spanish love bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they love mariscos. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Some don't like Spanish food, but I, I loved it. Um, yeah. But the culture, man, like being able to be in Retiro for, you know, just to relax for a Sunday afternoon or something like, I don't know that Americans do that as well as we can, but, um, uh, you know, we definitely have a, a work culture here. That's, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a beast. It's, it's a machine, yeah. you know, and, uh, it's an amazing place to grow a, a skill and to, to make money too. So, yeah. um, okay. yeah, with, uh, with software engineering or like, was, were you literally working with like elect electronics, like mechanical engineering, like telecommunications, like, like cameras and audio, or was it always, uh, how'd you go from that to, uh, to writing software or. Yeah. So, uh, again, I'm not a strange to software, but uh, because we share those classes the first three years, but uh-huh. I, I wasn't enjoy them when, when the professors were, were teaching those classes, uh, I didn't like them at all. I didn't understand anything they were saying. They were those concepts were so abstract. I took my Java classes and all of that, and I actually hated it. So I never went that route. Um, and I specialized myself in te- telecommunications, basically, which is signal processing, uh, transmitting, uh, yeah. not receiving, all, like pure te- telecommunications. And that's how I started working here in the US, actually, as yeah. uh, at AT&T. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I I was seeing that my progress at AT and T wasn't 
really fast. Like I, I already learned a lot or everything I could during those years. Uh, and I was really stuck. I wasn't getting challenges uh, on my daily, on a daily basis. I was really bored. So uh, they were offering these courses at AT&T to renew skills for employees to renew skills. And I saw this one about uh, software development and actually front-end web development. It sounded really interesting. I went through the through all the um, how do you say this? Like all the course um, projects and things you had to build and all of that. So uh, the curriculum, yeah. So I went through that. I said, oh, okay, this is interesting, and uh, my employer is gonna pay for it. So why not? Uh, I I loved it. Every time I was coding, it was just a new challenge. So being challenged every day, solving problems, I'm an engineer at the end of the day, so I need to solve stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I liked it so much that, uh, yeah, uh, fast forward, well, I got laid off during COVID, but I was already preparing for interviews at that time to move out of at and So timing-wise, it worked perfectly. I got laid off, but a few weeks later, I got my first job as a software engineer. So yeah. I love what I do now. And again, so it was, uh, I wasn't totally strange to software engineer because I took my, my classes back at school, but I did a lot of work on my, on my own. And yeah. Yeah. Trying to I took Java also, and I thought it was confusing. Uh, any, any sort of, uh, language I thought was difficult, but it's yeah. interesting that you hated it in college. And then you went, you started doing yeah. it for, almost like a, a intrinsic interest in it and then you yeah. became at least you, you obviously don't hate it because you've been doing it for several <laughs> years <laughs> no i i love it now it's just yeah. the best decision i could ever uh, have ever taken it was this career change that i love every day and i feel really proud of myself because of that because it wasn't easy yeah it's really hard i mean i, I think that a lot of people uh try to make it in the business world with no real skill you know they might maybe they go into uh, operations or HR, but if you have a skill like that, you're, uh, yeah. you're hireable no matter where you work, yeah. you know, and I work yeah. in sales and I feel like if I didn't have this company, I, it's okay. I can sell the say I can sell technology anywhere else, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it took, it took five or six years for me to learn what are the steps of the sales process when someone is negotiating with you, how do you keep your, your feet and uh, negotiate in an effective way, you know? And I, I look at those five or six years as maybe uh, my crash course, you know, even learning sales process things. Um, and, you know, to, to know that you had those those classes or that you went through that 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 grind, if you will, it makes it all the more um, fulfilling, you know, yeah, uh, to, to to be successful in, in that in that area, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you talked about, um, you know, signal, I think you said signal. Uh, like there was a word you used. I almost think about the decks, the DJ boards, you know, like was there any oh, yeah. transition between doing the, te the telecommunication stuff to being someone who's mixing music or even producing music? <laughs> it's funny that you ask that, but uh, yeah, I, I found it's, it is funny that many of the stuff you do while mixing and all those knobs you touch, they are altering and, and processing the signal the way, I learned how to do that back in college, all the mathematical models, all the physics exactly. behind it. Yeah. So when I was doing this, like, oh my God, if somebody had told me that by modifying this filter and this knob here and there, I would be affecting the signal. If they had taught me that way, the, uh, those classes had been different, I would have paid more attention maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So it, I remember in third grade, they, my teacher would always say, now that you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket your whole life. And then look what we have. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I I wonder if those prof professors um, had any idea that, you know, so here you are doing the calculations to modify the signal. It's just literally a knob, yeah. uh, you know, okay, bypass the base, bypass the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> bypass yeah. the mid. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to that specific skill, I'm more curious. I love music. You know, we yeah. all, all of our friends do. Did, mm -hmm. did that, did you just learn on YouTube or did you follow someone? Um, yeah. How did you learn to, to mix and to produce? Both. I, I was, uh, this was during the pandemic lockdown, those, mm -hmm. those days, those months. Uh, so yeah, it was a combination. I was trying to learn through YouTube, uh, but in YouTube you find all types of videos without any, 
with no no sorting or anything you just find one video and then that links you to another one so you're just keep you're consuming and consuming but there's no real order of things so i ended up uh, running into this guy that had also videos but he was advertising his online dj school uh so i paid more attention to him and said all right his content is real good i'm gonna check his actual course uh, and i liked it i signed up for that one uh, and then i was able to uh, make a real progress because there was some order in the in the in the lessons and in the videos yeah so you're, you'd recommend someone that's learning uh, off the start to not just Maybe you could find on YouTube some videos that would help, but for you, it was more of having the the order, the sequence of maybe exactly. beginners to more immediate to more advanced type type things. Yeah, yeah, okay. totally. I would recommend uh, that course. Actually, I've done it uh, already to some friends uh-huh. uh, because that's how I I I, I DJ. I started DJ, and I've been playing in Chicago so for a while. And so, yeah, yeah, it's uh it's proof that it's working. Well, that it worked. <laughs> Sure. Toward the end of the podcast, we'll get your next show or your next couple shows and we'll, uh, we'll produce, we'll put it out there for people to, to maybe head out to. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And something else, man, I, I know I'm just complimenting you, I'm not kissing your ass too much. Your English is good too. Like, damn, nice. <laughs> you, I would imagine some guy in Spain is saying like, how can I live in Chicago? How can I, you know, also learn to speak English? Like, cause yeah. I, I know a lot of, uh, Latinos like Mexican, you know, Colombians, and they are uh, self-conscious about their English, you know? And I say, you know, most, just like the other way around, when I speak to Carlos parents, they're just mm-hmm. excited that I'm trying to speak Spanish. Yeah. Right. And I, it's the same way, you know, I, I think that if Spanish speakers that wanted to learn English, uh, just spoke and weren't so worried about what people thought about them, then they could learn. But if you had any tips for anyone on on le- learning English, aside from just going to, to school and yeah. classes and university, is there any uh, any tips you'd offer on that? Um, I'd say to try to watch as much content in English as you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, so back in the day, I started watching like all these TV shows in Spain and um, I was using the subtitles, but in Spanish, it didn't make any sense at that moment, at that time, because I was listening to something that wasn't uh, related to what I was reading. So I immediately switched to get the subtitles in English. So at least I would be reading what they are, what I'm listening to. Um, so yeah, that would be my main tip. Just, I mean, obviously you have the chance to go talk. Uh, if you live in the U.S., that is easy. Uh, if you live somewhere else, like when I was living in Spain, that's not as easy to try to yep. be involved with uh, English-speaking people. But there are opportunities out there. There are so many groups on Facebook or whatever other platform to uh, try to meet up and and uh, hang out with uh, people that may help you. Just have a conversation over some drinks or in Spain, yeah. have to, to meet up for some tapas and start some conversation going on with with American people or British or whatever. But yeah, yeah, that was the gift for me. Was I studied Spanish as my major going mm-hmm. to to Spain? And prior to that, I was in Mexico for two months in high school. I think that there's an an easier uh, path if you start early. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was lucky to start early with my Spanish education. Uh, yeah. But when I was in Spain, you know, I did my best to always speak Spanish whenever I could. If some American students who didn't have very good Spanish, you know, maybe mm-hmm. I would speak English to them. But to any of the Spaniards or the Erasmus uh, students, um, you know, even if it's difficult, like can, just pushing yourself. And every time you hear a new verb or a new word, uh, you know, ask about it. Okay, how do you say that? Why did you say or, you know, a specific word there? And exactly. uh, you're going to laugh uh, going out and having drinks. <laughs> There's something about having one or two drinks inside your system, you know, or even coffee, like caffeine. Yeah. It just gives you a level of, uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that's universal. It happens to all of us. Yeah. You, you, and that's you it. You're a master in the language. <laughs> I, I would go to bars and, you know, I mean, like I would go with friends and, you know, uh, we would talk and I found that the easier the more light I was with my own self assuredness because I, you know, I was one or two drinks under it helped me. So I think that what I'm getting to here is just don't take yourself so seriously. Uh, learn the language by watching, do what you would do anyway to have fun. If you like Grey's Anatomy or you like Joe Rogan or, you know, something like that, yeah. put those shows on on the opposite language and put the subtitles on because it will help you. Um, yeah. and, and it, maybe you don't have the same enjoyment, but you'll have al- almost the same enjoyment. So no, I'm yeah. glad. And, and you, 
wouldn't even realize, but you start to pick up the language more uh, like faster. And at some point you'll find yourself not even reading to the subtitles. Um, it's kind of annoying because I still find myself reading, but because they are there. If they weren't there, well, there are like live TV. I don't have the subtitles. And I totally do perfectly okay without the subtitles with live TV. I know you can turn them on in on, in all these devices nowadays, uh, Xfinity or whatever, but I, I don't use it. And I, I live in the US watching live TV with no issues. I totally understand everything that is said. <laughs> I I I very I'm very self aware of uh, my accent. I know there's a lot of margin there to improve, but <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. I'm having a life here in the U.S. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's really difficult. I think the English, especially the the native accent. I mean, when I speak, I don't even uh, even I say I don't even like I'm not even using the word don't the T. I say I yeah. don't I don't even. It, yeah, it's so difficult unless you're just here for. 30 or 40 years to, to yeah. start, start to get those small things. And it's uh we don't, we don't really speak as the language is written. I yeah. like Spanish because generally Spanish is, is pronounced like the word is, is written. And yeah. uh, there are some irregulars. I think the hardest part of Spanish are verbs, reflexive yeah. verbs and past tense mm -hmm. verbs. But besides that, it's, it's a much more consistent language in, in my opinion. Yeah, if you know the pronunciation of every letter, uh, it's going to be pronounced on every single word the same way. Uh, there are, yeah, obviously a few exceptions, but you, you want, yeah, you'll have a better time by just reading the, the letters. You'll know, you'll be saying it right. That's what I mean. Yeah, even if you don't know what the word is or how, how to say the word. Yep. So you and I, um, we went out and played some golf this this fall and uh, late in the summer. And you talked about how golf was a you know a, a specific kind of sport in Spain. But tell me more about your experience learning golf and becoming good at golf, <laughs> as good as you you know as good as you are, and uh, you know like getting continuing to get better. How do you get better at golf? Yeah. Well, let me just say or clarify that I I have never played golf in my life until I came here. I I don't have any tradition. Or there's no tradition uh in golf in my family whatsoever is because golf is uh usually like a sport for rich people in spain so you you have to pay a lot of money to be uh associated to a club there's no public goal or at least not that i even know but yeah anyway that's that um so here yeah. in this time, i had this friend that had actually played all his life uh, so he took me and two other friends to the range just to spend some time, drink a couple of beers, and he gave us a wow. lesson. Uh, my two other friends and I liked it that much that we decided to just keep going and actually sign up for, for professional lessons from, from a professional guy. So, yeah, we took those lessons. We were progressing at the same pace. We were teasing each other. So it was big. It became more like a like an entertainment for us getting out on the course as we get we were getting better, um, and you know what we do at, uh, when playing golf you, you you just drink a bunch of yeah. beers or liquor or whatever and you are out there enjoying the nature. It's a great time. So yeah, um, that's how I started. Just because I had friends that were progressing at the same time and we were basically joking at each other, laughing at each other, laughing at us especially, and yeah. That's how yeah. I speak. And then it's addicting. And then you get better, get better. And you know how it works. It's golf is addicting. Yeah. I remember you said that first about the, in Spain, it's more for uh, rich people or something. I don't, uh, I think in the US, it's, it's a, what'd you say? You have to pay a lot. You have to pay a yeah. yearly membership on, the, on a clubhouse and it's ridiculous. And, yeah. Yeah. I think in the US, it's a similar mindset for people that don't play. It's like, oh, those are for the preps or for the, the bougie people. But, it's uh it's I think it's growing in popularity among all all classes and yeah um you know I like it I caught I always catch the bug in the summer but never enough to to play more than you know like once or twice yeah. a month but mm -hmm. I want to change that next summer so hopefully you and yeah. I can can get out there a lot Looking forward uh, to yeah I you know even the summer I, I think it helps to have a goal okay I'm gonna I'm gonna get under a hundred and yeah. I did that this summer and I'm happy. Like, and maybe to someone that's better, it's all oh, you, you can get a lot better than that. And I, I, I hope to get under 90 next summer. Uh, yeah. But it's, you know, it, it was ugly when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it is. And then, yeah, you keep practicing and you see your, your score getting lower and lower. So yeah, you, your, uh -huh. your goals become like higher. Uh, but yeah, it's just, 
going against yourself it's the the motivation yeah when you're on the golf course do you try to i mean let's say you're playing in a tournament or with uh someone who's really good and you really want to be competitive how do you view each hole how do you view your total score you know let's say you're playing bad i'm just trying to offer you some ideas for yeah. I'm, I'm curious how you view co competition in, in golf well i've only played one tournament um and uh the way it worked is just that we go the four of us go together as a team actually that's how it, that tournament was i wasn't competing with uh all the all the board it was just the four of us with different levels different skills but you apply the handicap and the total of our score then was it, that one was compared against the other four sums um i don't know i don't know what else to say about a tournament because that's not the norm what i do is just like play with friends or, or many times my friends can play i like to go play no matter what so i go play with my um, by myself and i get paired up with other three guys or whatever yeah so i'm i'm not in that round i'm not just comparing myself to them every time in golf i'm just comparing with myself with yourself yeah, it's all I do in golf because the one I need to beat is is myself. It's like, oh, the score I did last week, I need to beat that. I don't care what yeah. this other guy who I don't know how many years of golf he has played or I don't know how much, how many hours he trains. I don't care about his score. I care about my score because I know that the work I've done, I know yeah. that I can do better. So yeah, golf, I see it like as a, a sport where I just need to beat myself. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly what I was looking for. It's like because some people, uh, you know, even in business, oh, our our product isn't as competitive as the next as our competitor. It's yeah. really like, are you doing better than compared to yourself the, the day before? You know, and yeah. um, you're saying like, if I had to beat my score from last week, when you don't beat your score that week, you know, uh, I'm sure you're not happy, but you also are pushing yourself the whole round, mm -hmm. and you're not out there just uh, you know, just just not caring. It's like you're, you're getting better week by week, even if your score doesn't uh, decrease every week, you know? Yeah, exactly. Every every shot is different, even if even if that sounds like a cliche, but that's what it is. You're Every time you're in a different position on the course, so you could learn something from every shot. So yeah, even if the score is bad at that time, at that moment, you still, uh, you don't quit. I mean, I'm not a quitter, but you keep playing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, this is so great. I know it, I wanted to keep it, you know, around 30 minutes. So it's kind of yeah. wrapping up every person I bring on. I ask a specific question of all the things I offered today, you know, uh, mixing music or golf or, mm. you know, create X, maybe you wouldn't choose to go to work. Right. What, what yeah. do you think you would have, you would do on maybe an off day, um, to, uh, to enjoy, to enjoy the day. Golf at this moment is golf. It's gotta be golf. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. So you really caught the bug. Is it just like the game? Is it the the competition? Is it the the famous golfers and the PGA or what, whatnot? Like, what is it about the game that that you just love so much? I I've asked myself those questions. I don't know why I'm so addicted to it. It's just so amazing to just uh like I don't know. Uh, I've played other sports and the outcomes can be very consistent, but on golf, it's so inconsistent. You try to get to that consistently C level. Uh, so I think that's why it's addictive because you know, out of 10 shots, you just hit four or five amazing shots and then another five bad shots. So when those five happen, you just think about where, when am I going to get those five ones that I know I can do? And, and I think that's it. It's because you know you have those shots and the more you practice, you keep increasing that number of good shots, better um uh, versus bad shots so that's what it keeps keeps yeah bugging me just like i want to get there yeah and the first thing you mentioned also was being in nature i think mm -hmm. it's a really good i mean in the city it's tough unless you're i know you're over near sydney maravitz yeah. but uh you know if you're in the city and you can't be out hiking or you know doing something like fishing mm -hmm. or if you like nature it's really a good medium between being able to be out in the middle of nowhere and also yeah, be yeah. kind of in civilization, right? And it's right. it's a long enough round. If you play mm -hmm. eighteen holes, you're out there for four to five hours. You yeah. know, it's um it's long enough that you can disconnect. <laughs> yeah, 
And uh, you, I know I have my phone out all the time, but I at least I feel better after I play. Somehow I feel like there's, you know, oxygen or something in my lungs. <laughs> I, I can relate totally to that. Uh, and maybe, yeah, I, I hadn't mentioned it, but I think that's one of the things I like the most is because during the round, I'm in the zone. Or when I go to the range, I'm in the zone. I don't check the phone and, and probably I'm like you. I'm on the phone constantly maybe too much, but during the golf time, it's just golf time, it's me and the stupid ball that I need to put out there in the in the hole. And yeah, it's just uh, my time to just disconnect for from everything. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, just in closing, uh, I'd love to maybe get the link of the, the um, sorry, my, of course now my dogs are barking. <laughs> <laughs> the link of, um, of the, the YouTube videos for the mixing. For yeah. my listeners. And then also, if you have some shows coming up here in Chicago, um, let us know when those are and, and we'll yeah. uh, publish those for you. Sound good? Yeah, sounds perfect. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, all right. Well, have a good rest of the night. And uh, look, give me a couple of days. I, I edit this and I put a title on it and everything. Okay. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk soon. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, David. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night, man. Bye. Bye.